Hey everyone, well lately I reached 1973, uh, 1973 rapid, and I'm on my way to reach 2000 ELO, but I'm feeling that I'm not really, you know, you know, accomplishing that much. I'm not seeing a lot of progress. So I thought about, you know, just reflecting on my previous games, actually my first game, and see the difference and see the huge progress and the huge difference between how I used to play and how I am playing right now. So in today's video, I'll be showing you my first ever game on chess.com. Now you cannot access your first ever game because they will give you four games to play or maybe five and then they will give you a rating. So this is my first game when they give me a rating. So I'm going to look at this one. Actually, I don't know how, what, I was, <clears throat> what I was thinking about, you know, when I, played, when I played this game because it was too long ago, right? But I will definitely tell you and explain everything that I'm, you know, I played in the last game that I played. So there will be two games. This is the last game that I played. I guess in 1993, and I'm rated 1973. And this is the, my first game that I played, and they gave me a rating of 9940 against 715. And the game started with e4. Now, if you know me, I don't play e4 ever. But this is my first game, so I just, you know, I just played e4 because you watch a lot of YouTube videos. And they tell you control the center with plain e4. b6, and I develop my knight. Bishop to b7, knight to c3. Look at me de developing the knight, controlling the center. Wow. Attack the knight. Nice. Trade. d4. Wow, look, good center. The knight is protected. The bishop will be out. I love this. d6. Yeah, well, you know, at the beginner level, when they see something in front of them, they just want to attack it. If it's a beast or a pawn c4 wow attacking the bishop okay d5 the bishop went back e6 what why did i play e6 that just loses a pawn takes takes and bishop takes it is the best move and i bleed it and i don't know <laughs> i don't understand why i bleed it in the first place what so maybe I wanted him to take with the pawn so that I will open up my queen for a check. See, yeah, that's a mistake. I had to go bishop here. Oh, because after I play a check with the queen, he blocks. I sacrifice the queen and a checkmate. After I move the knight, but I just took here. And I played knight to g5, attacking the bishop and also threatening this check, but he can just block. And now bishop to f5, that's a... That's a blunder because of queen to d5, right? And I found the best move, queen to d5, nice. The bishop went to c2, take his rook, take here, and now my knight is pinned. How did I defend this? Oh, I take his knight. And bishop to e3, I don't even defend? Wow. I mean, maybe I could have defended like this, or maybe I could have taken this pawn. Because he cannot take the knight, the queen is pinned. And after he takes my queen, I take back with the knight. Yeah, but I played bishop to e3. So yeah, there's a there's a slight mistake here. And here I was supposed to take with the pawn, defend the knight, but I took with the with the knight. Okay. And now bishop, sorry, queen to b4. Bishop to d2, nice move. A check. And now here, what? Here he played g6 and did not see his queen was hanging. Oh, maybe this move was a trap. Because if I take his queen, he will take uh, my bishop with a check and I have to move my king and then he can pick up my uh, queen, right? Oh, nice. But then I give him a check and then I take his queen. But that's the exact same thing. He can take my queen then. But I'm still like six, uh, it's plus six for white. Here I, I missed a mate in three, which is this, this is the check, he cannot go here. And if he went to this square, I give him this check, goes here and knight to eat eight checkmate. Wow. I did not even knew that I, I'm thinking that deep, like in my first game. I literally thought that every move that I'm making is going to be a blunder, but look at this. Controlling the center, playing great, opening up lines, finding a good tactic. Yo. 
I was solid. Nice. And then here he just dropped his queen. I mean, come on. Now we're going to the real, real games. This is this is the game that I played yesterday against in 1993. D4. This is what I play usually. I don't play E4 ever, but I played this in like at the beginning of my chess progress. But now D4 always going for my queen's gambit, play knight C3, stuff like that. But he played. E6, knight c3, and d5 takes takes. And here I played bishop to g5. Now, here I can explain to you everything because I played this game yesterday and I know exactly what I was thinking about. After this move, I mean, the theory is, is to play like bishop to e7 or knight here, but mostly bishop to e7. And then I play e3 and try to get the bishop on d3, queen on c2, and you know, continue the game. But here he played the move h6, which I did not understand. I mean, I can just take the knight. If he takes with the pawn, yes, he took my bishop. Now he has the bishop pair, but in return he's going to have double pawns and he's not going to cancel kingside. And if he takes with the queen, which he did, or she did, Victoria, I take uh, the pawn uh, attacking her queen, and the queen went to c6. And here my knight is hanging. I was thinking about moving it back, but I was like, let's play e4. Now, I did not play e4 only to defend the knight. Yes, I'm defending the knight, but I was thinking about another move. So, try to find the best move here. Like, what is what I like? Let's say that black played, for example, this move. Now, this will lead to some checks. Let, let's just go here. Okay, let's say that black played the move g6. What is the best move for white here? Well, if you found this move, you are really good at tactics. Bishop to b5. Yes, the bishop is hanging, but when he takes, you play this fork, the king moves, you pick up the queen. And he cannot do anything. I mean, he's going to lose his queen because the queen is pinned and I will win it. So that was my plan behind the move e4, not just only to defend, but also to open up bishop to b5. Here he played bishop to d6 because if I play this now, he can just take me and I cannot play this check because he can just take with the bishop. So I bet queen to b3. Why I bet queen to b3? Because I wanted to support bishop to b5 and also I wanted to have a chance to play e5, push his bishop back and he cannot take my knight because it's defending. So I'm defending my knight and I'm also allowing bishop here and, and I want to take more control with the move e5. He played a6 to stop me from playing bishop to here. I attacked his bishop, the bishop went back and I was like, okay, if he went all the way back here, his king will stay there forever unless he wants to move the bishop again, which he will waste time. So he went here and I was like, okay, thank you for the for the bishop. I took his bishop and also the king is not castled, so the king is going to be very weak. And here I decided to develop my knight to f3. Now the crazy thing here that the best move is to play knight to e2. Block my own bishop. Now, I mean, here it's not like a... Uh, you know a good level of chess understanding because I mean this is an engine telling me to play knight e2 not a human being telling me to play knight e2 a human being will tell me I not have three bishop out come on bro but knight here I don't really understand it like, I cannot even play this I will lose my rook which is really crazy but I played knight to f3 he attacked my queen and here I decided to play this check I started to play check and when the king moves and if he attacked me at any point I can play queen to d2 and I'll be supporting rook to c1, you know, and attacking the queen and potentially the pawn. So I was like, whenever he attacks me, I can go here. So let me just play bishop to e2, try to castle, and go from there because I'm up, I'm up a pawn and I'll be winning this. Castle, knight here, and I play rook to c1, attack the queen. And after the queen went to d7, I was thinking a lot of stuff. Like here, when you're up a pawn and you have a killer advantage, in a killer position and your opponent's king cannot cancel you get overwhelmed with this kind of advantage that, that you have so you know i played b3 i decided to take it slow and i was like he cannot attack me with the with the knight because i can take here and the rooks are not connected so he can never attack me and he can never trap my queen so that was my plan and i was attacking the rook as well and the pawn and, and potentially play bishop to b5 to pin the queen, stuff like that. But I was like, okay, he will never play this move. And he played rook to c8. Now, I thought this move is a 
like some kind of a blunder because at a certain point I thought about you know sacrificing but that's a stupid move because even if the queen was not here the bishop is defending the rook so after queen takes pawn takes uh, rook takes I cannot win the rook because the bishop can just take me but it is good to see some kind of tactics so to keep your you know eyes open on uh, on tactics I played the move a4 because I was like let's play a4 a5 attack the knight push the knight back and if he went here well I can just take this pawn and he will lose most of his pawns and my bishop will become very active my rook will become very active so I played a4 he played bishop to d6 bishop to d5 sorry bishop to d5 and then I played the move a5 attacking him the knight went back so now he's defending this pawn and I was like I was thinking about a lot of stuff one of them moving the knight here trying to somehow put the knight here on this outpost on c5 or also try to get this bishop trade but I was like if bishop to c4 he can just take my knight and after I take I mean the king will not be safe so being up a pawn and you have you know a weak king is not a good trade so I was like let's play rook to c3 if bishop to c4 he takes me here I can take with the rook so let's say uh, for example he played this and after this he takes me he takes me here I take with the rook and now I'm attacking this twice uh, that's what that, that was my plan uh, by rook to, rook to c3 and also rook to c3 enables rook to c1 in case something happened here I can add more pressure that's why I played it he played the move c c6 but after thinking about it I was like well maybe he can just take with it like after I played bishop here he can just take me with the bishop and if I take with the rook, my rook is really weirdly placed. And if I play the queen takes, I don't know. I was like, it doesn't feel the same way it felt before when I was thinking about it. So I did not play it. I played knight here and knight to e1. And I decided to go knight to d3, knight to c5 to, you know, outpost the knight. Because uh, when you get good at chess, when you get uh, so good at chess, you understand positions differently. So at the beginning, you just, you know, see a piece, you try to attack it. But now, you know, when you get better at chess, you start to see squares, not pieces. So this is the, the square that I really wanted to, you know, take. I wanted to play knight to d3, put the knight here. It's defended by a pawn. I'm attacking the queen. He cannot attack me because I can just take the pawn. And I will have a very, very good position. That's why I played it. And now he went to rook here to b8. Now, I don't understand this. I mean, to me, it's just a simple blunder. I just, he just blundered the pawn. But I did not play it correct, you know, right away because not all moves, you know, are played um, in the best way. Like, I was thinking about bishop takes, like, right away in just, like, two seconds. But I did not play it right away. Why? Because when you get better at chess, you, you think, you don't always think about this happening because this guy is good at chess. So he will not, he's definitely not doing this stupid move, right? Right, so I was like, okay, what if I take and he plays some kind of a move like this, trying to deflect my queen away, and then if I take with the queen, there might be another attack, there might be stuff like that, and if I take, I'm going to lose something, so you have to think about all the other options, okay, so you have to think about this, even though it, it seems like a stupid move right now, you can take it three times, but if I take with the queen, I just lose this, and the rook will become active. So there is a lot of ways for you to lose your advantage if you're not careful, and if you're not focusing at all of the moves. So after focusing, and after, you know, uh, calculating this move, I thought, you know, I don't want to take with the pawn, because I'll be weakening this center pawn, right? So I thought maybe I'm going to take with the rook, maybe. That would be a, a good move. And whenever he attacks me like this, I can just drop back all the way like this, and it will be fine. Uh, the reason why you don't want to get a bishop trade, because then at the end my, you get forked like this. So that's why I wanted to keep the bishop, and if he wanted to attack me, I can just take. Yeah, that was my thinking. But here he just pondered the pawn. He cannot take, he will lose the rook. And now he played knight here, I went back with the bishop. Now, after thinking about it, I'm really not liking the move bishop to c4. I wanted to go bishop to e2, right? And after he makes any other move, I play bishop to f3, forcing a bishop trade 
and I will have a beautiful possession, right? But I was like, I'm up two points of material. No need to reroute the bishop like this. I can just put it here and let's just trade. And it is the best move, but after he made this move and I was like, I'm about to take, but I was like, oh, whoa, whoa. He can take with the knight and I'll get forked. My queen and rook will be forked. And that's not a good thing. So I was like, okay, let's move the rook, attack a pawn in the process so that he, you know, he needs to defend it. And then we take the bishop. He played the move g6 for some reason that I don't remember. I did not take. Why? I have no idea. He could have taken with the knight. Yes, he has some tempo, but I can just move my queen. Everything is defended. The knight will be active. The knight will be here on c5. The knight will be here and the rook will be on c1 or, in, or b1. I have a great position. But I don't know why I did not play it right away. I played knight d3. And it is a good move, actually. And trying to go knight to c5, my plan is to go here to attack the queen. Add some trouble there. Try to push the pawn. Stuff like that. And he attacked my rook. At, uh, and now I went here, rook to e3. Just to, you know, move away out of the attack. I also had uh, rook to h3, but I don't know why I did not play it. I was like, maybe I'm going to get trapped somehow. I'm going to allow his rooks in. Uh, sorry, his pawns in. So I played here, and now he pushed h h3. And here I was really scared because I was like... Holy shit, am I going to get checkmated here? What's happening? And here, after I played knight to c4, knight to c5, attacking the queen, he moves queen to g4. Threatening checkmate in one. Um, the pawn is supporting the checkmate and the bishop is supporting the checkmate. But I was like, here, I mean, the best move is to play g3. My understanding of chess will never allow me to play this because what the hell? I'm suffocating my own king. Why would I play that? That's crazy, but actually this is the best move. Why? Because his queen cannot go here, cannot go here to force the checkmate. As long as the queen cannot go here, I'll be fine. That was the best move. And I needed to move the queen then and then take here and have a good position. <coughs> Sorry. But then... In his position, I blundered. Yes, yes, yes. We 1900s, we blunder. Everybody blunders. Now my, you know, my thought process about this move, like bishop takes, I was like, he takes me. I understand. I attack his queen. He moves his queen. Sorry, he moves his queen. Uh, not here or here. There's the freaking knight. Okay. He moves the queen there. I move my queen. He takes my queen. I take his queen. Simple, right? Well, that's not a, a simple move. But then... He takes. And I was like... Oh, you freaking idiot. He can just take the rook. And I was like... Oh my god. How did I... How did I even thought about this stupid move? What? Why was I thinking about this? And I just lost my rook. I took his queen... He took my queen, and now he's up three points of material. After I've been up material and I've been winning this, and I have a really good position, I messed it up because I thought there was too much pressure on me. So I, I needed to alleviate the pressure by just taking the bishop, even though the bishop was not a problem. I could have just pushed the damn pawn. If he takes me here, I can just take with the pawn if I wanted to. There is no fork, and I can also take with the queen. It still works. I don't know why I did not play the move g3. I take here, I lose my rook, and now I'm in the losing position. I did not resign. I don't know why, but I pushed this pawn. I was like, if you want to push it, give it to me. Thank you. So I will be down two points. So that will be, maybe I can do something about it. Maybe. And if he takes, I take with the knight. And now he took me here. And I decided to take, and now he played knight to d5. Now I have to be careful because knight to d5 is threatening this fork, and I will lose my rook. So I played rook to e1, and I was like, any kind of discovery with the knight, you know, it's cover check, maybe it will be helpful. Maybe he blunders his rook in some kind of uh, a fork, something like that. I don't know. He moved the king. 
I played a check. The king moved back, and I was like, okay, let's play rook e6. I'm the one down material, and I'm the one attacking. So, whenever you are down material, attack. You have nothing to lose. If you want to play it passively, I mean, he's just going to get his king out. He's going to get his rooks active, and you will be losing this game. So, try to be attacking, uh, you know, as much as possible, so that you will force your opponent to just defend, 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 and maybe you will get him. But rook to e3, rook to e6, attacking this pawn, and he defended. I don't know why he's defending the pawn, but... I mean, it's kind of scary to lose this pawn and you have two fast pawns that are not stopped by pawns. You know, these two might be a nightmare for him. So he's like, okay, let's just defend the pawn. And here, I had a plan. Now, I'm going to first tell you the plan, which is what I was like, a6. Now, here he has two options. Actually, three. Either taking the pawn, right? Either pushing or not caring and just making another move, right? Right. Here, I was like, okay, if he takes, I want to play this check. He cannot move his king because I can play a check. And after he moves again, I can take his knight. And now, it is equal in material. It is equal in material. This pawn is defended by the knight. He will not get into my pawns. So I was like, okay, that will be a really good position. I was like, very nice. And if he pushed, the same thing. Check. He moves somewhere, I give him some kind of check, or maybe a check with the knight to run away then, maybe, yeah, or check here, and then try to push, and if he takes me, I can make a queen. I had a lot of ideas. But, he decided to take my pawn, and actually the best move here is just to move the king. Crazy. Because if I play this, he can maybe just go here, and then I'll be cooked, and if I take here, as long as the rook is still there, I have nothing. And even if I play this fork and I win actually the rook, it's still uh, better for him, which is crazy. So he took, I played this check, and now he blocked with the knight, because he might be losing the knight if he went here, right? He blocked with the knight, and here I was like, wait, I thought that I, I was winning, because I had knight here, knight to e6. He cannot go here to defend, because I can just take him. But I was like, okay, after this move he can just go here. And now he's defending himself. So I was like, okay, at least let me just take a pawn with it. Uh, you know, a pawn is better than nothing. And attacking the rook. He went here to defend. And I went back, defending and attacking him. Something with this. Okay. So I'm attacking him, attacking his rook. And now the rook moved. Here, I was like, okay, let's, let's just push a pawn. Trying to fork him. Trying to make use of this pin. He moved his king. I push this pawn and he cannot take it because after this check I will win his rook and he cannot block me because it's attacked twice so I will win the knight if he took my pawn. Here he made this pawn push which is a creative. Why? Because after I play the move d6 and for example he plays this check I cannot go king to h3 because I'm losing because he can play this check after I move rook takes h2 is checkmate. Right? So that was a, a creative move by him. He had an attacking move. But I played this move. He moved his knight and now... Now... He played rook to b6. Now it's a draw. Or a win. For me. Because if he moved the knight, well... Checkmate. Cannot go here, cannot go here because of the pawn. Cannot go here because of the knight and he cannot block or take the rook. So I will be winning. And if he decided to run away with this game... Thank you for the for the knight, and now it's equal. It's actually I'm up a pawn. But two rooks are really tricky to deal with, but hey, we're not losing anymore. So in his position after rook to b6, he played check. I cannot go there, I'll be losing. And I thought about going here, but I was like, I'm allowing too many checks. And I was like, okay, let's just go here. If you wanna keep you know repeating checks, I'm down. Okay? I blundered and I, and I right now I wanna draw. Right? He took the pawn. So now the only way not to lose the game or lose a piece for nothing is to lose a piece for at least a pawn. So he took a pawn, I take with a check, and now it's back to equal. It's not a draw. I mean, at this level, we don't, we don't even know what's, what the hell is going on, okay? It's saying it is equal in material, but I mean, at this level, everything can anything can happen. 
he played rook here and he's attacking this pawn. And I was like, okay, let's just push my pawn. Because I know when the two rooks are on the same rank, okay, on the same rank, and my king is down there, and there are no pieces, no pieces, uh, no pieces, uh, you know, around my king, I will never get checkmated because I know this pattern. They're going to keep just checking me, checking me, checking me, checking me all over the place, and there will be no win. So I was like, I don't care about this pawn. Let me push my own pawn. He takes, I give him a check, and he went king to d8. I would never play king to d8. Why? Because I'm moving away out of the damn pawn. Why would I move away? That's crazy. But if this, maybe then some kind of a check, mate, oh my god. Come on, I would definitely not go there because that would be checkmate. Come on, bro. Think. Okay. So he moved here. Yes, he moved there. And I play this check. Now, I was thinking about pushing the pawn, but he can go here. And I wanted to make a queen so bad, but I couldn't. Actually, the best move here maybe is to go rook here. Defend and, uh, you know, try to make a queen. And if he takes me here, I can make a queen. He can take me here. And maybe it's going to be a series of checks. Maybe some kind of virtual check. But after this check, and I was like, okay, he's going to go here, attack my rook. Because that's the only move. He cannot go here because of the knight. He cannot go here because of the pawn. And when he goes there, I push the pawn. You cannot take me because I make a queen with a check. But after this move, it was a draw, but I blundered. I blundered because after rook to b and sorry after b7 it is winning for black and is not taking the rook it is actually allowing me to make a queen that's crazy when i when i did not see this during the game neither did my opponent but in the game review i saw this idea and i was like hey no way bro rook here first of all he plays a check I don't know, engines like to play checks. Then he goes rook to b2. And when I make the queen, he doesn't have to take. It's checkmate on a1. That's what I missed. That's what he missed as well. That's crazy. And I thought, oh, wait, well, after I make a queen, he can take me. But then I can take. And I'm the one up material. I'll be the one winning. But I completely missed that he will have rook to a1 check. He did as well, and he, after after I pushed the pawn, he played a check. But instead of going on b2, he went to c2. Now it's a draw. Now it's actually, I mean, the computer is saying it's a win for white, even though it's completely great. Yeah, the, the best move is rook to b2. And here, I sacrificed the rook. Why? Because I wanted him to take me so that I can play, make a queen with a check. Well, after this, my idea was if he went back, I'm going to keep keep checking the dude. Keep checking him. I don't care. I'm going to keep checking him. Farming, you know, brilliant moves. Because I wanted him to be on the first, you know, sorry, on the eighth rank so that I can make a queen with a check and keep checking him until I get the draw. And if I allowed him for some reason, after I go here, if I allowed him for some reason to, uh, to you know, if I just made a queen... Well, let's say he moves, and I make a queen, I'm losing after this move. I'm not losing, actually there's rook here, which is crazy. Wow. So even if he moved the king, I can make a queen. What if he moved there? It is the exact same thing, I can make a queen, and there's no checkmate because I can block with the rook. Wow. That's why he was forced to take it, and I was like, wow. Why did he took? Oh, he was forced to take it. And I make this queen, and I keep checking him. Keep checking him. Now, here, my understanding of this position, I was like, yes, I'm of material, but how the hell am I going to win this? The rooks are connected. Okay, the rooks are connected. There's no way to win this game. Because in order to win this, I have to take one of the rooks. And I was thinking about knight to b3. Now, knight to b3 is creative. He doesn't have this check, nor this check. The knight is beautiful, but he has this check. After I move, of course he doesn't have this check because I can just take. And after he takes, I take. I still have a piece, and this is defended, so maybe there is a way to win this. The engine saying there is a way to win this, but 
you know, we might miss this one up. But I was like, my knight will be very far away. I mean, come on. This is his king, and my knight is going to be there. I want my knight to be closer. So I was thinking about knight d3. He doesn't have this check, right? Because the knight is protecting. He doesn't have... He does have this check, but I, I can block. I can block. And when he attacks me here, I didn't know what to do. I was like, hold on. Hold on. He can just take my, uh, my knight. And after I take... He takes, and I take, and he plays this, and I have to go here, and it might end up in a draw. And I was like, come on, bro, there's no way? And I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen then, but what I played, actually I'm going to show it to you now, here, is to play knight d3, he plays his check, I block, and after knight to c1, sorry, rook to c1, the best move here for white is to play king g2 that's what i missed during the game because i was like wait he's just gonna get my knight and he's gonna get my queen and maybe his king is super close to the pawn so it will end up in a draw or maybe a loss for me so i was like no i don't want that but the best move after rook to c1 is king to g2 giving away the knight to give this check he's move he's forced to go here and queen to h3 is checkmate that's what I missed. That's why I did not play knight to d3. I wanted to play this move so bad. But I don't know. I don't know why I did not play it. I thought he's going to win everything. He's going to win the knight. He's going to win the queen. And his king is going to get to the pawn. Completely messed this one up. So I played the queen to h7. Because it's a blunder. Not because I blundered my knight or my queen. It's a blunder because I blundered my advantage. I had a plus one or plus two advantage and I'm winning this only if I played knight to d3 but the thing that I missed at, at the end I can just play king here and give this check and checkmate him after he moved this king I moved my knight now I moved my knight here now there's no point now there's no point because the king's not stuck and after any check he can just take my pawn I needed the pawn I needed the king to get closer I needed to be active not to make this check and yeah now my queen is really far away he take my pawn, and here I was like, am I losing this game? Am I really losing this game? I thought, okay, thank God I have this knight here so that I can always block. I moved the queen here, and now because if I didn't move the queen here, let's say I move the queen here, there will be this check, right? And I cannot move. I have to block, and there will be this check, and I have to move, and king violation, I just lost the game. That's why it's very important to play queen here so that I can support this. So after this check, and I block, there will be no check here on f2 because I can just take him. It's very important in the endgame to be very careful about the squares that you choose. After he moved the, his king, I kept, you know, here he played this and now he's winning the, the knight, but I was like, no way you're gonna win. Keep giving him checks, check, check, checks. He's stuck. He cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot go here. It, it will lead to a draw. And the game ended in a draw. Even though it was completely winning for me at the uh, at the beginning, I blundered. We all do blunder, but the most important thing after you blunder is to learn from your mistake. So I did the blunder. I learned from my mistake. I found a beautiful defensive move to get the queen, to get the draw after losing <coughs> after losing material. And this is how it how it went. This is the difference between how my first game ended. And this is how my last game, last rated game, ended not like this. It ended like this. With this, with a draw. I mean, it's not a win, but this is my last game that I played. And you can see the huge difference in thought process. So whenever you play chess and you think you're not improving, go check your previous games. Go check your blunders and your mistakes. Now, there's a lot of mistakes and blunders I played in other games, but this is my first game I played, my first rated game. That's why I wanted to show you to you. And this is my last rated chess game I played. I played, it, I played this one yesterday. This is why I wanted to show it to you. I can choose games, but I was like, let's be authentic and choose the first game that I ever played and the last game that I ever played and show the difference between them. Hopefully, you you, you know you saw, you saw see this video as helpful. And thank you so much for watching.